Ahoy Sailors! This canon guide is the first in a series of guides where I plan to go in depth on a specific aspect of PvP rather than just giving you a broad surface level guide on multiple topics. I know there are great tutorials on YouTube that explain the very basic aspects of cannons, but in this video, I plan to provide a more comprehensive guide to newer players while also sharing a few tips for the veterans looking to sharpen their skills. And just a quick disclaimer, I definitely don't claim to be the best cannoner, but I have sailed with and against some really talented crews, and I just want to share some of the things I learned from them along the way. So without further ado, let's start the video beginning with the basics. So before we actually get into firing the cannons, I just want to go over cannon skins and the different types and kind of what to stay away from and what to use. So in my opinion, the sailor cannons are the best cannons to use just because they don't block any information. You can see incoming cannonballs. You can judge where your cannons are going better. And they just overall don't have anything in the way. They're the most minimal cannons. And to me, that's the best. Now, definitely use any cannon type you're comfortable with. But to me, the more minimal type cannons with the slick top are the most ideal. And that's the ones I recommend. So one type of skin players like to use is something like the bone crusher skin that kind of has sort of an iron sight now if this is a skin that you think will help you line up your shots by all means use it now going over some skins to avoid something like the sunken sorrow skin where it's just super bulky and just blocks a lot of your view i wouldn't recommend using um, just because the tip of the cannon is a little bit higher than where the cannonball actually shoots another skin that's in this category i don't recommend is something like the silver blade skin or like the obsidian skin where the end of the barrel just flares out now another feature a lot of players don't know about on cannons is you can zoom and to do this right click on the mouse and what this allows you to do is kind of get a closer look at where your cannons are going now I never use this feature just because when I'm shooting cannons, I like to see where my first shot goes. And if I'm constantly zoomed in, it's harder to get a reference. So I always shoot, kind of turn the cannon away and then shoot back where I was at. So I can keep that consistent arc. For me, this is great when shooting shots at range and it just makes it harder when I'm zoomed in and have less of a field of view. So another tip I like to use is when specifically aiming the cannon, um, using WASD keys to move the cannon for big movements. So I'll call these the macro movements. And then for little micro movements, I'll use the mouse uh, to kind of fine tune where I'm aiming. So again, that's WASD, uh, just for those big movements, getting your cannon on target and your mouse to dial in those small movements. There are three environmental effects on your cannon aim that you need to know about to help you understand why you're missing your cannon shots. These three effects are waves, the turn angle of your boat, and the boat speed. So from this angle, you can easily see that the waves rock the boat left to right, which in turn can cause your cannon to either shoot higher or lower than intended. So if you're someone who feels like you're aiming in the right spot, but your cannon tends to go too high or too low, then you may want to be more mindful of the wave's effect on your boat. So the next environmental effect is the turn angle of your boat. And depending on how hard the boat is turned to one direction, this will increase the left or right direction of the cannonball shot. So right here, I'm turned hard left towards the outpost and the cannonball almost lines up with the right hinge on the cannon. So going in the other direction, you can see is the same, but on opposite sides. So turning hard right, the cannon will now go more towards the left hinge. So anytime you turn towards the target, the cannon will go more towards the nose of the boat. And here, I'm just going to flip the rotation to turn away from the target. So instead of the cannon leading more towards the nose of the boat, it should now trail towards the aft end of the boat. And this happens anytime you're turned away from the target. 
So if you're someone that misses your shots from left to right, or you lead the shots too much in front of the boat, or you're too far behind, just keep in mind how hard your boat is turned and in what direction it's turned. So as we approach the outpost, you can now see the cannon trails towards the rear of the boat. Now the last environmental effect is your actual boat speed. So it's going to be hard to see from this because I don't have another ship uh, parallel with me. But if you are side by side with another ship and you're going slower than that ship, then you're going to have to lead your shots in front of them and then their boat will catch up to the shot. Now if you're going faster, you want to trail your shot so that way your cannon catches up with their boat. So in simpler terms, the faster your boat's going, the more forward momentum your cannonball will have. So the next thing I want to talk about is the distance of the cannonball, chain shot, and the player when shot out of the cannon. So you can see from here that the regular cannon goes the farthest, the chain shot goes the second farthest, and the player character goes the shortest distance when shot out. So next I want to talk about special balls and when to use them. So chain shots are really valuable and a lot of players have trouble with them. But a tip that I use that helps out a lot is to start firing regular cannonballs first. And once your cannons are lined up with their mast, all you have to do is load a chain and raise the cannon a little bit higher than you were. So here I'm consistently hitting X's, which means I'm hitting their cannoner, which in this case, the cannon is right in front of the mast. So that means all I have to do is I load a chain and then raise the cannon a little bit higher and I'll almost certainly hit that mast. So right here, I'm just keeping that pressure on their cannons and making sure I can consistently hit their cannon line. And here I'm really doing two things. I'm keeping pressure on their cannons so they can't fire back while also lining up my aim for a future chain shot. So once I'm lined up, I go for the chain and I'm really confident it's gonna hit because my cannons were already hitting along the lines of the mast anyways. So it hits, but it doesn't take down their mast. So I gotta go back to the ship. In this scenario where I'm broadside to broadside, using chain shots while they still have cannon shots on me isn't that ideal. Um, however, I'm putting pressure on their cannons so they can't really fire back. And then when they do get a chance for some shots, they're kind of missing. Uh, they do hit the mast there with a regular cannonball. If I was in the same scenario and they were hitting me with cannonballs, I would not go for a chain here. Just because suppressing their cannon fire is more important than demassing them. So they do start hitting a couple of shots um, and I was thinking of peeling out, but they start peeling out. So I know that all the shots I've been hitting means they are taking on a lot of water. So as they start peeling, it means they're losing angle. So all I have to do is readjust, get angle, and then I'll start lining up my cannon shots and then I'll go for the chain shots again. So a ship peeling away from you is probably the second best uh, scenario for using a chain shot, just so you can stop them from running. So here I do shoot out, I think four chain shots and three of the four end up hitting. Just to really show you how effective it really is lining up your shots with regular cannonballs before you chain. And after I got their mass, I was able to shoot out and go for the board. So earlier I talked about a peeling ship was the second best scenario to chain shot a ship, but a nosing ship is the best scenario. This is because they have no cannon angle on you and the ship's actively moving closer to you so they're even easier to hit. So switching to blunder bombs, one of the best ways to utilize them is especially when I'm a sloop going into the broadside of a galleon, shooting blunder bombs at their cannon line to keep them from firing at me. Now here's another example of a uh, good blunder bomb use. So right here, I have to turn right because of the rocks, but I know I'm gonna go in the broadside. So I preload a blunder bomb and I aim right at the cannon line and I am able to get a kill and it's buys me just enough time to get away by the time they start hitting. 
So switching from chain shots and going to firebombs, the galleon in this next clip is nosing me, which means basically they have the nose of their boat pointed at my cannons, which as a helm is probably one of the worst things you can do. But since I'm a sloop and I only have one cannon, they can kind of afford to do this. So typically I pretty much only use firebombs just specifically for galleons. Um, if you use them on sloops or brigs, you don't really get as much of value because the fires can be put out pretty easily. But on a galleon, it can kind of be a nightmare, especially if you hit all five firebombs like I just did. So what you're really doing here when you get a crew on fire like this is you're making them eat a ton of food, going through food like crazy. Four people eating food constantly wastes a lot of supplies. You're also taking one of the players downstairs to go bucket water under the fire. So now it's a 3v1 instead of a 4v1. And then lastly, it's a really good distraction. So you might be able to get a board or make some other play while they're distracted. Now I was going to go in depth on cursed cannonballs, but since there are so many and so many different combinations and scenarios to use them, they honestly could be in a video just all by themselves. Now, if enough of you guys want me to do a video on it, just let me know in the comments and I'll make one. So now that we've gone over the basics that I think pretty much every pirate should know, uh, we're going to get into a little bit more advanced stuff. And this is the stuff that I find most exciting about cannons. And these are tips that I never really saw any videos about on YouTube. And I kind of just had to learn these uh, just through the years of playing seas. So the first topic I want to go over are long shots. And there are about five aspects to this. And the first one is the max range of a cannon. And the max range you can shoot a cannonball is at a 45 degree angle, similar to this. Anything higher will just shoot the cannon higher and arc down sooner so it won't go as far and anything lower just isn't going to send the cannon to its maximum range so a good way to practice doing this and kind of getting familiar with how far your cannon's going to go is as soon as you see a ship put your cannon at a 45 degree angle and shoot the cannon if it goes anywhere near it then they're probably in range but if it's not even close then they are not in range and it'd be a good idea not to waste any more cannonballs so building off that last tip, once you start to go for fights at longer and longer distances, you can start to gauge a little bit better from distance where the general vicinity you need to start aiming. And at this point, your cannons might be close, but maybe not on point enough. And that brings us to dialing in. Now, when you're dialing in, it's all based off your first reference shot. So generally what I like to do is shoot a cannon and either turning my cannon to the side to look where my arc is going, or you can drop your cannon down to see where your arc is going. Based off that first shot, you can kind of pinpoint if you need to go higher, if you need to go more to the right or to the left, or maybe you're shooting over and you just need to go a little bit lower. And once you hit that first shot, a good way to keep that reference point is to see about how high up on the mast your cannon is aiming. And in this clip, my the tip of my cannon is level with that emissary flag, so it's a really good reference point. Some other good reference points are the wind lines or something like the cloud in the sky. But the best one is probably just the enemy ship's mast. Now, another tip if you're kind of new to taking these long shots and trying to hit them more consistently, it's always better to shoot higher above the boat than it is lower because if you shoot above the boat there's always a chance you're gonna hit a mast and if you shoot under the boat there's never a chance you're gonna hit anything and in the same fight is a good example of when I'm shooting my long shots dialing in I do shoot a few over and a couple of my cannons do end up hitting that mid mast and it does end up coming down so if I were to be shooting under the boat I wouldn't be getting any value. So in this scenario, when I'm shooting a galleon that has three sails, it's not too big of a deal if my cannons go over because there's a really good chance I'm going to hit a mast and still get value for the cannon. So this final clip is a really good example of kind of using all those beginner tips, the waves, boat speed, the turn angle, as well as using the tips uh, to dial in. So once again, I'm just kind of shooting at that 45 
gauging how far the cams are going, how far the ship is that I'm shooting. And I'm also gauging kind of how fast their ship is going so I can sort of know how far ahead to lead my cannons. And when you're doing this, once you hear that first trumpet sound of your cannon hitting, that's really all the confidence you need. And don't be discouraged if you're missing those shots, but they look good. Just move your cannon to the side, make adjustments, and just keep practicing. Now I saved my favorite tip for last, and in my opinion, this is probably one of the coolest things you can do in this game. And this actually doesn't really even involve aiming cannons at all and that is dodging cannonballs. Now this is a really, really important skill to know, especially if you're going up against a really good crew and their cannons are constantly whizzing by cannon line or hitting cannon line, because the last thing you want in a fight, especially when you're solo, is to get one balled and just sink because you're not able to bail your ship. So there are three different ways to dodge cannonballs and this first one I'm going to talk about is what I like to call the double tap. Now the best scenario to use this is when you see a cannon is going to either hit the cannon line on the side of the ship or a mast or some object on the ship that you think might knock you off the ship. So for this double tap method, as soon as I see this cannon coming in, I tap F to release the cannon and then I tap F again to get back on the cannon. A really good time to use this is as soon as you get hit, tap F to get back on the cannon and it kind of negates that knockback. So this next method is really simple, but it's just simply running out of the way from the cannons. Nothing fancy, it's just getting completely out of the area where the cannon's going to hit and it can save you a lot and i don't see a lot of people doing this even really sweaty players seem to just stand on cannons while incoming cannons are coming in so again here's another example of just running out of the way now these are long shots so i can kind of see the cannon coming a lot more in advance as soon as i see that cannon coming in it looks like it's going to hit the deck and i just run out of the way so this final method of dodging cannons is probably the coolest one you can do and definitely makes for really good highlights. So this method I call the matrix just because of the way you dodge the cannons is really reminiscent of the movie. It just requires a little bit more practice and is a little bit riskier than the last method or the first one because you're not just running out of the way and you're not letting the ship absorb a cannonball. This is used primarily when a cannon is whizzing just over the top deck enough to hit your pirate but not hit the ship. So let's watch an example of this and then afterwards I'll explain how it works and how to do it. So to do this, I once I get on cannons, as soon as you see a cannon coming in and it's going to go over the cannon line, um, you just want to notice which direction it's more going towards. So in this case, it was kind of on my left shoulder. So as soon as I start seeing the cannon come in, I let go, start walking backwards, and I turn towards the cannon. And the reason I turn towards the actual cannonball is because your player's point of view is at the very front of your hitbox. So behind you is where the rest of your hitbox is and turning towards the cannon just puts the rest of your hitbox behind you. And here's another example. So now you've learned some new tips and all that's left to do is just go out there and practice. Now there are some really good ways to practice cannons through PVE like the Order of Souls fleet's voyages or even the naval part of the Legends of the Veil vale missions. But as far as PVE goes, the best world event you can do is probably the skeleton fleets. Now another way to practice your cannons if you don't want to worry about being shot at is to go to a fort or a fishing sea post or anywhere where you can circle your target and just fire cannons at a stationary target. Now this is really good for newer players who maybe don't feel comfortable PVPing or maybe the PVE is a little too hard. 
but once you start getting confident in your cannons against PvE or stationary targets, the next best thing you can do is start PvPing and server hopping for Reapers. Now the best way to do this is to just load into a server and immediately go to the Reaper table and if you see a wooden ship on the table, that means there's a Reaper on the map. Now, probably the best way to get good at cannons and practice at the highest level is to join different Discord Alliance servers. Now, not PvE Alliance servers, but Alliance event servers. So these are servers that host a lot of events for Naval, and since Arena has been removed, they're really getting big. And some of the things you can do in these servers is join a team, or you can put together a team. There are different roles, and one role is even main cannoner. Um, if you don't have anyone that you play with normally and want to start a team with, you can always be a free agent and everyone's always looking for a player to join. Now, probably the most well-known server like this is the NAL server or the Notorious Arena League. And at the time of making this video, it's been discontinued, but I'm still going to post the link to the server so you can join. And it's just really a good resource to network and find other players who want to get better. So two really good servers that are still active are Sea of Vengeance and the Legacy Brawl Hub. Now I will post the Discord links to both of those servers in the description, but they're set up a lot like the NEL, just in the way that there are multiple teams and you can sign up to be a free agent or start your own team. So that's it for the video. I know it was kind of a long one, but there's a lot of aspects to go over through with cannons and hopefully you learned a couple things. I know when I was newer and I was just getting started with PvP, it definitely would have been helpful to see a specific guide on what I was trying to learn rather than just a general guide. And also have those beginner tips that everyone should know, and then also something in more advanced that I could work on once I got proficient with the beginner stuff. If there's anything else you want to try to get better at, consider checking out some of my other tutorials. And if I haven't made a guide on something specifically that you want to try to get better at, just leave a comment and let me know what it is.